So you and I have a lot of mixed emotions since the last week, since the presidential election. And I've got my notes here of some of the things I wrote down. Had a lot of conversations with a lot of people and had a lot of conversations with people that I have a mentor-mentee relationship with. I have a lot of conversations with people that are in politics and uh, had a lot of conversations with people in the, in the media and the celebrity uh, world of understanding about money. So this is my take on my reaction to this presidential election, the Biden election or not, the Trump loss or not. And in this video, I'm going to share with you in this reaction, I'm going to share with you some of my good, the bad, the ugly, some of my notes to help me process through. So therefore, I'm not emotional about the situation, but more logical. And the way I've gone about it in the last five and a half years I've practiced this is having good, the bad, the ugly assessment and looking for the silver lining in this conversation of the presidential election. So the good. So here's what's good. Um, here's what I realized about what went well with this election. Conflict always allows you to find out who your closest friends are, <laughs> right? You like people voted or not voted the way you thought they would. And it reveals to you really how they are. And in most relationships, you find out you think you're close, you think you're close, you think you're close. And next thing you know, something like a political election, people vote a certain way. Now, that may not line up with the values and principles that you have, but now you know how people really feel when they're alone in that voter's booth and they have a decision to make for themselves, for the betterment of themselves and how they vote. And so the alliances and friendships are now secretly and openly revealed. And, and in some instances, based on how you individually voted, people just didn't like you. And you got to be okay with that. And just so you know, I'm very comfortable in my own skin. I've had friends. I've had not had friends. I've had people that are attracted to my message. I have people that have not attracted to my message. It's okay. I'm in the process of constantly evolving and developing myself. And along the way, I will attract the people that I'm meant to serve. And I know I'm naturally going to repel the people, sadly, based on those that I won't. I'm comfortable with that. And I believe that the good Lord will send people my way that I'm meant to serve. And uh, in this situation, you know, sometimes you, you get exposed to people that you realize that we're never really alliances after all. It's more so a relationship of convenience, of just getting along. Uh, but when push came to shove, people didn't vote, or, uh, vote your way or not their way. And by the way, that's okay. I want you to know that's okay. Because the best, the best of the best, the reason why people build multi-million dollar businesses, people are become decamillionaires, people become billionaires, is because they find a way to get along with everybody. They find a way to still help other people, to make money together, to still build a value to the public, the community, that the, that the marketplace that they serve. The best of the best don't let stupid political differences divide them. And I voted uh, the last four or five elections opposite of what my, fr my friends and family had thought I'd vote. No judgment. We still love one another. We still get along. They do their thing. I do my thing. And uh, we look up and find out where everybody's at towards the holiday season. And we still have meals together. We still get along. And, but I just want to let you guys know, the best of the best also is non-judgmental. The best of the best knows how to love and to forgive. The best of the best knows how to have empathy and still move forward. The second good thing that came out of this thing, the stock market went up. I think the numbers here is the market gained last, mar uh, last week, gained 6.9% last week during a week of supposed chaos. The marketplace responded positively. It's a good thing. 638,000 jobs were created last month. Unemployment down to 6.9%. So that's a good thing, a very good thing. Uh, third thing, I think there's a big one. The good thing right here, highest voter turnout ever. Highest voter turnout ever. Uh, projected 161 million people voted. And uh, here's the thing. Do you think that Obama was a pretty popular vote for a lot of people? Do you think Obama was a pretty pretty uh, emotional, inspirational vote for a lot of people in America that the first African-American president is going to be a president of the United States? Well, people came out to work, woodwork. I was here in Chicago and I saw all this happening. I saw the Millennium Park just get crowded with people. I saw people with inspiration and fighting and just tears in their eyes. Next thing you know, they voted for Obama and Obama became a United States president. 69.4 million Americans voted for Obama. Check this out, though. This last election, record amount of people showed it up for this election, 2020. Guess how many people voted for President Trump? More than they did for Obama at 70.6 million what about for Biden? 74.9 million voted for Biden. Holy moly. So you're telling me 
that Biden was more popular than Obama? Holy moly. So another good thing here um, to the HBCU community. Another one here for Kamala Harris. First HBCU from Howard University. First black and South Asian ever voted to, to the White House. And so that's pretty exciting news. Um, I've got a lot of friends that went to Howard University. Uh, my, old, my, my own aunt actually taught sociology at uh, Howard University. A couple things here too as well in terms of some stats. Compared to 2016 votes to 2020 votes, you know, this whole thing about the, the black vote and the Latino vote and the Asian vote, check this out. Um, 6% in 2016 voted for Trump. How many, how many do you think voted for Trump this year? Guess what it is. Guess what it is. Drop in the comment section below what do you think it is. How many of the percentage voted? Was it more or less than 2016 of the black vote? Well, here it is. Here's the numbers. Here's the data. The black vote doubled to 12% and voted for President Trump. Holy moly. 6% to 12% voted for Trump this year. What about Latino vote? 28% of the vote went for Trump in 2016. 32% voted for Trump this year. Asian vote. Check this out. The Asian vote. 31% of the Asian demographic voted for Trump. Crazy. So some interesting things here in, in those stats. So I think that's part of the good. People are getting more. I hope that you get more involved in your political endeavors. I remember a mentor uh, shared with me, I think it was Plato's quote. He says, to not get involved in politics, or at least to not understand politics, means that one day you will be ruled by your inferiors. So I didn't say you have to get involved in politics. I, I said you have to be aware and educate yourself about what goes on in the world because you don't want your inferiors voting in policies that compromise your way of living, your freedoms, your economy of scale at your house, um, the, 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 the things that go around that affect your life. So you at least should be aware. I hope more people get involved in the young Democrats, the young Republicans, get involved in Turning Point and what, whatever. It, it gets you involved in the independent party. Whatever it is, get involved in making America a better place to live. Now, here's some of the bad. Bad assessment. Number one, exposure to voter fraud. You can't tell me that there is not some form of element of voter fraud. I'm in Chicago, man. I see this happening all the time. So you can't tell me that if it can happen on a local scale, they can ha it can't happen across the country on a national scale. So the question, though, is, as it does often happen here in Chicago, will this be swept under the rug? Or will these lawsuits actually expose, by President Trump, these lawsuits actually expose and let the people aware of who is responsible for voter fraud and what consequences will be there for either outcome? What consequences will be there for both? Here's another thing that's part of the bat I'm processing here. A lot of Republicans are quiet. A lot of Republicans are quiet. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, the party is quiet. Not a lot of people are standing up and, and, and fighting for President Trump. I see George Jordan. He's very vocal. I see a lot of the people that's uh, a part of the uh, 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 Project Veritas standing up and very vocal. I don't see a lot of Republicans being vocal, though. I see a lot of people say, hey, how come we not say anything? How come we not say anything? How come we not say anything? I see Charlie Kirk very vocal. I see Donald J. Harris very vocal. I see a lot of these guys um, very vocal that have been on this Trump train for a long time. And it's exposing to me, the bad part is it's exposing to me how Republicans really feel about President Trump. It's exposing to me how much he has been draining the swamp. It exposes to me part of the bad, how they don't want to stand up for this guy because you know, I, I believe that, as you may see this happening all the time, that politics is all about favors. Um, what favors are you giving out? If I do this, you know, you know, what type, what type of uh, help can you assist me in this situation? Well, since Trump has been stepping on everybody, including a lot of people inside the Republican Party, a lot of people don't want to do favors for him. A lot of people don't uh, want to stick their neck out for this guy and be remembered for sticking out their neck for this guy going forward. That's part of my bad assessment. Now, here's some of the ugly uh, here's some of the unanswered questions, and we probably we won't know for a very long time some uh, uh, unanswered questions. Is this a legitimate election? Is this a legitimate election? Listen, I'm saying this from a very unbiased standpoint. I'm taking a step back, removing my emotions from the situation. I'm looking at this from this thing. As a competitor, I'm saying, if I'm going to win, I'm going to win with my competitor at his best, knowing that all rules are followed. That's just me. It may not be everybody. And so... Probably a big unanswered question for a lot of people. Is this a legitimate election? Hammer software? Was there some accidental accounting that went the other way? Uh, Mail-in ballots? That's another question. Why, why, why suddenly between the wee hours and morning 
all these mail majority of the mail-in ballots, how come all these mail-in ballots started to vote for Biden, 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 Biden? Why? I don't know. Unanswered question. And I think it's worthy uh, of a question to be answered one day. Uh, question is, what will Trump do now? I'm, I'm wondering, what will Trump do? Because here's what I realize. There's two types of losers. There's two types of losers, assuming that this is a loss. Okay? Uh, uh, two types of losers. I've been in competitions before. I lost competitions. Um, here's, what, here's the first loser. First loser. He loses. Man, I feel bad. They cower. And you never hear from them ever again. I took a loss. I'm publicly embarrassed. You'll never hear from them again. The second type of loser is this. Dude, I took a loss. And I accept this as a failure. And I'm going to come back better, stronger, more robust, more bold, more courageous. The, the, the energy comes out in a much different way. And think about this real quick too as well. Trump in four years is only going to be 78. And this guy works. I'm not, I'm not so sure if he's going to do that. Come back as a Republican nominee. But uh, all, I, all I can say is, it's not the last you've heard of President Trump. Uh, and I say that President Trump as the uh, current recording of this video in, in November 2020. Uh, number two, here, here's the ugly. Expect taxes to increase significantly. So I hope if you decided decide to make some money, you have an appointment with your CPA, you have an appointment with your, your person who does your taxes and figure out how to anticipate how to arrange your investments, how to arrange your business, how to arrange your uh, potential expansion of your business. So therefore, you're not getting clipped when these taxes significantly increase. It may not happen next year, but definitely in uh, 22, 2022, 23 going forward. Number three, um, this is going to unlock more government regulation to businesses. Uh, financial people, if you're in the financial services industry, prepare for that. If you're in, in, uh, in business, prepare for more government regulation coming down upon you. Uh, number four, here's part of the ugly. Uh, I realized four entities that actually help control the world our world, at least here in the United States of America, the government, it's just not the only entity. What's the other entity? Big media, big tech, Wall Street. Yo, who is really running our country and calling the shots? It's part of the ugly part of the conversation here that I'm starting to process and starting to question here going forward. Now, speaking of going forward, okay? I've always said, man, no matter what goes on in the White House, the most important thing what goes on in your house. And uh, regardless of who's in the White House, I and those who choose to be part of the first generation cash flow millionaire squad mentality that you are going to go out there and say, I'm going to make money regardless who's going to be in the White House. The, the, the president, whether Trump or Biden or whatever president in the future, guess what? They're not doing with you. They're not sending you clients. They're not sending you referrals. They're not making phone calls for you to, 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 to advance your business. They're not doing that. So at the end of the day, Republican, Democrat, whoever's in the White House, you still have to pick up the phone. You still have to put your feet on the pavement. You still had to make the, the, uh, the, your make ends meet. You still got to make the unnecessary, uh, uh, you still got to make the necessary adjustments to your business to thrive, not just survive from here going, going forward because of the pandemic. Um, number two, here's another thing. Here's another thought. Do not judge, hate, or marginalize somebody just because of the political views. Do not judge, hate, or marginalize somebody just because they feel a certain way about the Democrats just because they feel a certain way about the Republicans. Listen, at the end of the day, I hope that we can all take a lesson from the Army-Navy game. I hope we can all take a lesson from the Army-Navy game. You know what they say about the Army-Navy game? Listen, it's going to be a fight. Go, go beat Army, go beat Navy. But at the end of the day, guess who the biggest winner is? America. Regardless of who wins that game, the biggest winner is America. And I think that's a big loss of where we're at right now in our country. And, and I, was, I was having a conversation with somebody uh, now imagine after graduating high school, people haven't declared for college, people haven't declared what their intention is after high school. Imagine if America required as a social experiment that if you're undeclared or you're not registered for school or college, that instead of draining your parents or draining or bank accounts and rising, you know, raising student loan debt, that you actually go serve the military. That you serve the Air Force, Army, Navy, Coast Guard, Marines, or you serve the Peace Corps or you serve UNICEF, or you serve World Vision, you serve some form of nonprofit organization for at least two years if you're undecided. I wonder if that'd be a worthwhile social experiment because I believe at the end of the day, we are all God's creation. I believe that we are all flawed. I believe that we can change and choose to become better. And I think that's where our company lies because guess what? Our company, we got Republicans, we got Democrats, we got Muslim, we got Christian. We got agnostic. We got people grow from this neighborhood, grow, grow up in the suburbs, grow up in the country, grow up in Nigeria, Africa, immigrate to America and successful. And that is what America is all about. And as I wrap up, you know, I'm thinking about this conversation I had with somebody about the Kennedy family. 
And it's amazing how the Kennedy family in 1961, when he took the inauguration, when, when John F. Kennedy took the inauguration, he said in his inauguration in 2020, close to 60 years ago, it'll be 60 years ago next, next January, he said, don't ask, now this is from the Democrats, don't ask what the country can do for you. Therefore, ask what you can do for our country. Ask what you can do for your country, the United States of America. And it's amazing how 60 years later, that, that same conversation from the Democrat Party is more like this. Ask what your country can do for you and vote for them. Interesting how it's changed 60 years later. That the government wants to say, I'll provide for you. Instead of you saying, what can I do to build up my country? Something to be thinking about, something I'm thinking about. And that's what motivates me. That's what gets me out of bed every morning to jump out and say, I need to help more people. I need to serve my communities better. So therefore, I can show people how to be not victims, but how to be self-sustaining, self-inspired, self-motivated, self-generating uh, cash flow millions. So therefore, they can fund and finance the lifestyle that they want to live for the rest of their lives and for multiple generations ahead without government involvement and more personal development, more family involvement, because that's the type of generation that's the type of wealth building that's earned and it's valued over time so that's my thoughts i love to know what you're thinking i love to know what financially speaking you're making moves in business to get ahead of the rising income taxes the change in what's going on in the government i don't know how exactly how drastic it's going to be but for those of you making money it's going to impact you to some extent for those of you not making over four hundred thousand dollars it's not going to impact you if you don't have any plans to make over four hundred thousand dollars, i don't think it's going to impact you very much but overall taxes are going to increase somehow, some way. It won't be proportional. It, it may not be incremental to everybody, but all I can say is um, either way, no matter what goes on in the White House, the most important thing will goes on in your house. With that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notification, be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Meanwhile, I'm praying for you that we all blast through this pandemic, we get healthier, News today that there's a new vaccine here by Pfizer. So if you haven't watched it already, here's a video I want you to consider watching. It's called Three Signs That You're Ready for a Change. Consider watching that video as to insight how therefore you can pivot and adapt and adjust throughout this pandemic. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy here from Chicago. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.